You see, we are subject to the rules of this body. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not subject to these rules. Oh no, they say, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ That Allah says in the Quran, either I am a bashar like you. So, therefore, how can he be different to us? I had a debate one day, Munazra, and in the Munazra, the, uh, the, uh, the other scholar, he said, how can you say the Prophet is different to us? He's a human, we are human. Do you deny this? قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ I say that, do you say that just because he is Basharum Mithlukum, therefore he is exactly like you? He said 100% he is exactly like us. <laughs> because he is a Bashar, we are a Bashar. He has eyes, we have eyes. He has hands, we have hands. Therefore he is exactly like us. I said, really? Just by the word Basharum Mithlukum, you think he is like you? Oh, when Maryam salam was about to become pregnant, Sayyidina Jibreel salam came. And you know how he came? He didn't come as an angel. Allah says, basharan Look at the words of the Quran. Ana innama ana basharum mithlukum. Look at the words of the Quran. Here, Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes as a mithal. As a mithal like an angel? No. Fatamathala laha basharan sawiya. Jibreel alayhi salam comes as a missile of a bashar. But did anybody ever say Jibreel is a bashar? No. Allah says Jibreel came as a bashar. We do not deny that Rasul came as a bashar. But we do not say he is a bashar like us. Why? Because our reality is bashariyat. Our reality is manhood, but his reality is not manhood. The way Jibreel comes in the form of a man, yet preserves his uh, real uh, essence. Likewise, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes in the form of a man, but preserves his real essence. And what is his real essence? Different subjects. Some other time I'll tell you. His real essence being قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورُ وَكِتَابُ مُبِينَ Some other time I'll talk about the subject. But what I want to, I don't want to digress from my subject. The subject is, how is it possible for somebody who eats like us, who sleeps like us, who talks like us, who sees like us, who hears like us, how can he be different to us? The way when we go six feet beneath the floor, he goes six feet beneath the floor. So therefore, the relationship is one of name only. No. When this issue came before the Sahaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayat in the Quran on this subject of the living and of the dying of the Prophet wasallam, And it is customary in our family that whenever we give evidence, we give evidence from the Quran. So with hadith, you have to look at khabre wa'id, whether this is mawzu, whether this is mursal, whether this is khabre tawatur or khabre mashur. But with the Quran, you can close your eyes and accept that there is absolutely no doubt in this respect. Now we're talking about the living and the dying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Huh, living is for uh, us? For you, you live for yourself, you die for yourself, true? You live for yourself, are you understanding what I'm saying? You live for yourself and you die for yourself. La taziru waziratan wizra ukhra. You will not bear the weight of another, you live for yourself and you? But is this the rule for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah revealed an ayat in the Quran. You see Allah gave a written guarantee in the Quran. Uh, and he gave, because he gave it in the Quran, it's a receipt for us till the day of judgment. He said, Oh my beloved, announce in the Quran. He said, قُلْ 
inna salati wa nusuki. Oh, my beloved, announce my salah, my sacrifice. But the last two words of this ayah, wa mahya ya and my living, wa mamati and my dying. It's not for myself, but it is lillahi rabbil alamin. It is for Allah rabbil alamin. So the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah. When you hear the name of your master, you should instantaneously say The Prophet said, he who does not hear my name and say Salatu, uh, read Salatu Salam upon me is a very stingy person. So you don't want to be classified as a stingy person. The Prophet says, the automatic reaction of an Ummati when he hears my name is So the Sahaba came up to him and they said, Ya Rasulullah how is it possible wa mamati lillahi rabbil wa hayati is for us because you do tabligh you do uh, you teach us deen how is mamati how is your going from this world for rabbul alamin they knew that when we go from this world we give hisab to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> we give hisab because we live for ourselves and we die for ourselves but they knew that he does not give hisab in the qabr. Why? Because he has never committed guna. So how can he give hisab in his grave? Anyway, this is another subject about the, uh, about the uh, issue of uh, the purity of Rasulullah I want to keep to my topic. What was I talking about? You see, this is a good way to find out whether you're following me or whether you're just saying subhanAllah, mashallah. <coughs> I'm not one of those speakers who's just going to go on for one hour or half, one and a half hour and say I, this is a speech if you ever attend my dars al Quran it is more interactive I expect uh, people to interact more so you must follow what I'm saying what was I talking about before? I'll let you off this time next time I'm going to ask you and if you don't respond I'm going to say you might as well hear the first part of the lecture on the video and then when you've heard that and understood that then I'll come back and do the second part so be careful now Wamamati the Sahaba asked Ya Rasulullah how does your dying how is it for Rabbul Alameen maybe uh, some people may think that your dying is uh, because you do uh, Ibadat but the Prophet وسلم, is not obliged he's free from Guna so why does he how does he benefit us in his Mamat so upon this Quran's ayat, the Prophet ﷺ answered his sahabi. He says, Hayati khayrun lakum wa mamati khayrun lakum. My living is good for you and my dying is good for you. Now, tell me something. When you are about to see somebody who is about to pass away and if he has wrote in his will that you're going to get 10,000 pounds then he's right in saying that yes my living was good for you and my dying is good for you? No. You'll say your living wasn't good for me, your dying is good for me. <laughs> Why? Because when you're living I don't have 10,000 pounds. When you die I... 10,000 pounds. But here we're not talking about dunya. <laughs> How much benefit? He says, Hayati khairun lakum. The way I used to benefit you when I was before you, likewise I will continue to benefit you when I'm in my grave. Oh. 